So I've already shown how to make impacts out of anything. This is going to be the counterpart technique to that. How to make sustained textures out of anything. Um, for starters, here's what our raw sound is going to sound like. It's got some cool movement, but there's there are like clear silence gaps, as most sounds in most libraries are. It just doesn't go on for long enough, and maybe I want like an infinite length of this. So uh, the core of this technique is around using like granular processors. So in this case, we're going to be using M granular, and I've already got the chain uh, ready here, but really it's built off of this uh, schizophrenia like preset. What I did is I just edited it and I uh, linked all the bands. And I like set all the parameters and um, reduced the pitch variation a little bit, but you can see there's like uh, in the real patch here, that I've cooked ahead of time. There's like a little bit of randomization on the pitch, uh, pan, delay, and uh, there's, I'm just using one voice across three bands and they all have pretty similar settings. Like you can turn that down if you really want to. Um, and that alone sounds like this. You can tell as it's still going. Uh, it takes like a while to kick in and then it has like a sort of long trail to it. And one of the cool things about this preset is it has built-in modulation routed to the uh, band limits. So it's like, you know, doing a multi-band split with different granulators on each and different randomization settings on each of them and they're moving around. Um, and that's kind of cool, but it just sounds like a delay at this point. So what I do is I just like stack the same thing four times. Um, and since each of them are like randomizing slightly differently, and the uh, frequency bands are like moving around ever so slightly differently. Um, it usually results in like a more complex layered sustained sound like this. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna kill it. Sorry, keeps going. It'll go on forever. Um, and that—that's the core of the trick. Really, it's pretty simple. You can use any other granular plugin to do the same thing, like Silo Portal or whatever. Um, and they all have slightly different flavors. And you can also like try out the different uh, presets in them granular, and they all do a similar thing if you just stack them enough times. I usually put OTT after that just to bring the details up. And then uh, pro Q to like high pass it because most times when I've sustained things like this, I don't want a whole lot of low end build up. Uh, that'll sound like this. That's pretty good. It just brings the details up some more. And I'll usually build on top of that with uh, some EQ movement. I'll run through this as it's playing because it takes a while to build up. But essentially, it's like uh, three different sorts of filters, and they're all have their own like randomization, uh, random modulation going. Let's hear that. So you can see this is just like a 5.7 dB peak that's moving around. It's moving. I've got some light phasing. If I turned it up, it'd be too much. It would sound like this. That's maybe a little bit too much for this use case. So I'll just bring it down so the mix is only slight. And then I'll usually add like, uh, this is also like a parametric band. It's boosting and cutting, but mostly cutting and just has its own, uh, it's using this figure for modulation. I'll just keep that going. Um, and then I like sometimes a little bit of like a talking low pass filter as well to like filter the high end a little bit.
that can be pretty cool to have. And uh, this is sort of like uh, I would use it if I wasn't using the low pass. Sometimes I want less discreet sort of echoey sounds and more smeared smooth textures, in which case I'd use uh, Timeless. And this is with just like a bit of diffusion and a modulated delay time. That's all it's going on there. And it's like 100% wet. Delay time is set to like 461. I don't think many other delays can do a diffusion like this. Um, but yeah, that one just also sounds pretty cool. And then, yeah, sometimes I'll follow it up with a limiter just to bring the level back up. For sounds like this, I find it's also important to check them in mono, because a lot of times when I'm implementing something like this, it'll be playing from a point source, and so I want to make sure it folds down okay. Yep, still cool. Um, that's the extent that I'm going to show for now. Uh, just to prove that you can do more than synthetic textures with it. I've also got some uh, pebbles here uh, from Michael Griggs. Um, those sound like this dry. And then like this granulated. And then we've also got some, uh, looks like, uh, rock debris, uh, from Axel. That sounds pretty cool too. We'll just granulize that to play out and, uh, thanks for listening.